All right, today we are going to talk about texture. And now texture refers to the look and or feel of a surface of a work of art. And we have to say and or because there is two dimensional texture and there's three dimensional texture. Uh, three dimensional texture is the stuff that you can actually feel. When you pet a cat, it is furry. When you try to pet a cactus, it is prickly. Uh, two dimensional art is when you try to pet a picture of a cat, it is smooth. Or when you try to pet a drawing of a uh, um, cactus, it's also smooth. Um, so it's this idea that the picture looks like it has texture, even though you can't physically feel it. Both of those are examples of texture. The way we differentiate them is by calling them real and visual texture. So real texture, I'm going to pull this up over here is the physical feel of an object. It's what it actually tactically, like if you touched it, that's what it would look like. So if we go over to our notes over here, you can see that texture is the physical feel. Real texture physically feels, it's not something you can draw. Please come here, there we go. Click and drag. Um, the next one is visual texture. That one looks like it would feel, it's a two dimensional texture. The next one, so this one breaks up into two different types because visual texture is a lot of different things. There's a lot of ways of making a visual texture. The first way is simulated texture. The word simula simulated means to mimic or imitate. So that's this one. You're trying to pretend it's a real texture. So if I'm drawing a picture of a cat, I want the fur on the cat to simulate real fur. I want to try to make it look like real life. The other option is to just make stuff up. You can invent a texture by repeating lines or shapes to give the illusion of there being actual texture there when really it's not. Um, and that's it for texture. So now we're going to move on to Unity. If I go back over here, ta -da, Unity! Uh, this is a sense that all of the different parts of a work of art go together. So this one is called Old Man with Guitar by Pablo Picasso. It's during his blue period. During that period, he painted primarily in cool colors, blues and greens and purple. This guy isn't dying or dead. It's just a choice that the artist made to use those colors to send an emotion of sadness, of exhaustion, just emoting those things without having to actually tell you about them. And they create a sense of unity in this piece and in these pieces in this genre, um, because of the techniques that he used. So if we come back over here, if we want to have unity of size, oh, and just remember down here, you're matching four objects into each of the boxes and every piece will only be used once. So there's no duplicating. If I want to match, let's pick shape first. Which of these shapes are four that are all identical? It would be these little zigzags, right? There's a zigzag. There's a zigzag, zigzag, giant pink zigzag. Okay, the next one says color, Ooh, blues. Blue, 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 all the blues go here. And that leaves the last one, with all of these little shapes for size. Ta-da, we made unity. And those are the notes for today, nice and quick.